Hello everyone, I've had a few emails and messages asking for a more detailed explanation of how you set up the work holding system which we developed for the Pocket NC machine. Um, so in this video I'm going to show you how you use a combination of these components to hold different kinds of stock. Uh, I'll start off by taking you over to my Pocket NC machine. I've got the vice that you can buy from Pocket NC on the machine to give a bit of size perspective but before I take it off I'll give you an explanation of why I don't use it. Um, when you tighten it I find that this end bit actually flexes which means when you're holding a piece of stock especially a spin, uh, thin piece of stock it actually moves with it this bit isn't actually tightened on. Um, it's quite hard to position stock where you want it as well so it's really hard to get it centered on the, um, on the machine and also you're quite limited in the size of stock you can hold. So I'll take that off and then I'm going to start by putting our base plate on. So I'll give you a quick look at this. So that's the top and that is the bottom. You've got three dowel pins there, there and there. There is a hole for a fourth um, but I found I don't need that. You get enough locating accuracy with three dowel pins. There's no point in putting a fourth in because it just makes it harder to remove. Um, you've got two threaded holes, that, which I'll show you what they're for in a moment. And then you've got diamond pins again, which I'll show you what they're for. So these dowel pins locate into the dowel pin holes on the machine, like that. You just pop it in, push it down. There you go. It helps if you push down straight rather than an angle like I just did. Um, once it's in, you hold it down using eight of these little screws, they're M4 screws, uh, which go into those holes. I'm not gonna do all eight, you get the idea. You don't have to use eight, but I've just put eight in because some people might have stripped the threads on some of their holes, so it gives you an option of using whichever holes are best for you. And also, um, it means you're just blocking up the holes, um, so you're not gonna get chips in, but you don't have to use all eight, like four will do. The dowel pins can be removed, you have to knock them out, but they can be removed. Um, they're quite a tight push fit but again if you kind of damage one or one of your holes on the machine isn't quite right you can put a dowel pin into a different hole I'll supply them with three already in um, but with a fourth dowel pin should you need it with our system you pretty much just keep this on the machine um, but should you need to remove it just rotate your a-axis up like that and then push it from behind um, and you'll have to kind of go around the edge and just give it a tap but it does kind of gradually wiggle out and release itself um, I'd prefer not to use dowel pins. Diamond pins are way better for locating, but you have to work with what's on the machine, so that's why I've used three dowel pins. Um, so to set up the base plate for five axis work, you get your DM12 made in the USA by fifth axis, and you line up these two dowel pins with the two holes on the plate, like that. And then you use the screws M5 screws that come with the DM12, just pop those in, tighten them, and that's it. And that means you can do your five axis work with dovetail stock like that. Zoom on in. Just pop it in like so, tighten it from behind, and then that's going nowhere, and you can hit five sides all at once. For doing three axis work or second op work, you take your DM12 off like that, and you get your fixture plate, this thing, and you pop it on like that. So the way it locates is that base plate has four diamond pins on it, which are way better than dowel pins for locating. It's so easy to get things on and off, but they offer exact, exactly the same locating accuracy if you use them correctly. Um, and those four diamond pins uh, fit into these four holes here. These other holes are to create room for the, um, the screw heads. And then it's secured from behind by four screws that go into these threaded holes here. And those screws come up through those from behind. So again, just rotate your A-axis up and uh, screw it in from the back. Um, the screws don't have to be tight at all. It's just a case of uh, making sure they're touch tight and it'll just, it stays on fine. So if you were to accidentally strip one of the threads in the back of the plate, again, you're not doing them up very tight, so you shouldn't really do that. Um, 
but if you did three or even two would hold it on absolutely fine it's the same with all the screws around here uh, eight is overkill um, I have made a few design improvements to the base plate and to the fixture plate uh, the first of which is I've reduced the height of the diamond pins and I'm also going to use button head screws instead of these standard screws so that allows me to just lower the height of this which in turn allows me to lower the height of the fixture plate um, there are also going to be two further holes here which are for putting long dowel pins in which can then locate into the two corresponding holes in the fixture plate this is so that anyone who struggles to line it up can again rotate the a-axis round they can use the dowel pins to just line it up and then it will guide itself onto the diamond pins you shouldn't have an issue but it's just in case the second improvement is that I'm putting a hole in the middle here. Uh, this is so that if you ever wanted to use a vacuum plate instead of the fixture plate, um, you could put a uh, rotating coupler through the middle there. So as this spins, then obviously the vacuum hose doesn't doesn't wind up, uh, and then yeah, you can have a vacuum plate add-on. I think you'd be prohibitively expensive on this machine, but someone might want to do it, so it just leaves the option open. Um, reducing the size of these diamond pins and reducing the screws down means that there is ne less clearance needed in the fixture plate itself um, for those parts, meaning that the overall thickness of this part of the base uh, fixture plate can be reduced. So that will go down by about two and a half, three millimeters. Also, I'm going to knock about a millimeter off the height of these notches here. So the overall effect will mean that the fixture plate top is about where that plane is there on the uh, on the new version. Um, also, if I pop that on the machine, you'll see uh, that at the moment we've got this lip going around the edge. That won't be there anymore, so the notches will go right out to the edge, meaning that you can get an even bigger surface to, uh, to locate your stock on. So I'll take that off, and then I'll take the camera back over here and show you how to set up the various components on the fixture plate. I'll move these out of the way first of all. Don't need those screws in either. Right, so get your fixture plate. And then you want to get a piece of stock that you're trying to hold. So that could be a chunky piece like that, could be a long thin piece like that. We'll just get a hold of that. And then what you're trying to do is take a locator and an OK vise, like that, to clamp the stock. So you tighten down on the OK vise and that clamps on the stock. So I'm going to show you how to set that up. So I'll take that stock away again. The first thing you want to do is get the rack component. And if I show you a close up here, you'll see that it's got teeth on it. Right, so when you drop this into the plate like this and drop the other rack component, there's a left and right, so you need a pair for each OK vice plate or each locator. Um, and you'll see both of these parts also have teeth, so that's the OK vice and that's the locator. And you drop these into the plate, and the teeth engage with the teeth on the rack so they can't push any further back. So you can move them forward and back, just lift them up and they engage with you. You obviously want as much engagement as possible. Um, so get it in roughly the right position. Do the same for the locator. Just drop a left rack and a right rack in. Like that. And get them in roughly the right position. Then put your stock in the middle, which that looks about right. Take that out again. Then what you want to do is get one of these T-nut components, which you'll see they've got a threaded hole for an M5 screw in the middle, uh, which allows allows them both the locator part and the OK vice plate to be locked down. So I'll show you how you do that in a second. Just tap it along to get it in the right position. Do the same for this OK vice plate. Then take your screw, drop it in, and as you're tightening, you want to push back 
and there's a slight tiny bit of side to side movement so that the teeth can drop into the groove so you want to always push to one side or the other i always push to the parts left side so the right side as i look at it so that way um so back and to the right and then just tying it down And that lifts the tina up and means it's not going anywhere. Um, then you want to do the same. Grab an OK vice, put it on here. And the OK vice, as you can see, hits against the back wall. It can't go further back, so it pushes forward to clamp the part. So just drop another screw in there. And then hold that back again, like that. Just get it tightening a little bit. And then drop your stock in like that. Clamp it all the way down. Now I mean the stock's not going anywhere. Uh, as with the base plate and the fixture plate, I have redesigned these components a little bit. So the main change is that the teeth on the racks, uh, if I just zoom in on that, there's about 4.5 uh, so I correct myself four millimeters of movement uh, each time you move forward or backwards so I've changed that to make the teeth smaller so each time you move forward or backwards you'll get 2.5 millimeters so it just means the increments in which you move are much smaller giving you much greater accuracy so that'll allow you to position parts exactly where you want them now you may also want to put another clamp in which you can position really wherever you want uh, so long as it's above a groove, so you can put it, you can put three along there if you want to, you can put one in the side like that, or two in at the side, configure it however you want. Um, you can also use a locator like that. So that'll give you great positional accuracy and repeatability if you need it. Um, for longer, thinner pieces of stock, for instance, you might want three clamps or two clamps um, and two locators to hold it, because a clamp in the middle might allow for a little bit of movement. It's really up to you, configure it how you want. Now there might be occasions when you want the clamps to actually bite into the stock, say for instance, if you've got a taller, thinner piece of stock. Um, so for that, I have these knurled drawer attachments, that one's for the locator and that one's for the OK vise. Uh, and as you can see, they have tiny, tiny little teeth, which dig into the stock and mean that it's not gonna go anywhere, even when you've got a small hole on it. They bite in really well. They leave a tiny, tiny mark, um, but you can only just feel it when you rub your finger over the top. Now, the locator one just screws straight into the locator using those two screws. Um, the OK Vice one, you have to get this custom jaw um, because OK Vice do supply on their larger clamps a jaw with holes in it that you can attach things to, but they don't on this clamp. So I've had to make one myself, which you can get from me. Um, so you take the clamp apart. Um, the clamp comes with loads of these rubber bands uh, if you ever need them. Um, yeah, just put this on the front and then you can screw the attachments in. Um, I'm also going to make or supply a soft jaw, which is basically this jaw, but without the knurling on the front. So it's just a bit cheaper because um, it's less work to make. I paused the video slightly there just to assemble this OK vise and put the attachment on so you can see what it looks like. Um, the versions for sale will look slightly different to this. Um, that's just the tab that I haven't uh, filed away uh, when I was machining it. Um, so the top the changes are that the top of the um, nail jaw attachment will be flush with the OK vise. That's to give you as much exposure around the edge of the part as possible. You obviously want these to be as low down as it can be. And for that purpose, if you want, you can actually machine this down to the top of the screws um, and hold with just the, the nailed uh, face that's left. So you could just machine this out of the way and that will give you even more exposure around the... Um, uh, or even greater access around the part to machine. Um, and for that purpose, I'm actually going to use 
M 2.5 screws, whereas I'm using these M3s at the minute. Um, and that'll mean that the top of these top of these uh, screw holes are a little bit lower, so you could machine right down to those, and then you've got can just use this uh, this smaller gripping surface. So I think that's most things covered. Uh, if you've got any questions, just drop me an email or a message on social media, and I'll I'll get back to you. All right, thanks.